Today on Off the Dock, come with us to the beautiful Temiskewa Waterway in Mattawa, Ontario. Then how about a quick jaunt down to Florida to check out the water skiing at Cypress Gardens. And we'll also take a look at the Severn Waterway and travel through the locks. So stick around, there's a lot more to come. Off the Dock Adventures on TSN is sponsored in part by Honda Four Stroke Outboards, we understand. And Honda Four Tracks ATVs, get out there. The Temiskwa Waterway is a waterway system that was formerly known as the Lake Temiskaming Ottawa River Waterway. And what it is, is it's a waterway that travels from uh, Lake Temiskaming down to the Ottawa River. Mattawa is the centre location of the Temiskewa Waterway. Uh, what it is, is, it's also the meeting of the Mattawa and Ottawa Rivers. The river was beautiful. There's, uh, there's lots to see. There's a lot of history behind this river. Uh, it acted as one of the main uh, waterways to the west back in the 1800s. Uh, the waterway itself, it's uh, changed a little bit throughout the years. It's marketing. We've uh, really tried to get the boaters' attention in the last couple years. And uh, part of this is changing the name to Temiskawa. That's simply a play on the words Temiskaming in Ottawa. Just made a little bit shorter and easier for boaters to remember. The waterway has the Laurentian Mountains, which fall on the Quebec side, which is a real asset to this uh, beautiful scenery. Like there is, um, there's a lot of points of interest. Um, although I love boating, it's a nice opportunity to be able to get off the boat, get on shore, and explore the different areas that they have on shore, hiking and seeing waterfalls. It's a good combination. I think what boaters like about this waterway is that it's very quiet. There isn't a lot of traffic. There's a lot of um, open wilderness out there, beautiful scenery, and it's a place to get away. And traveling the river uh, today especially, uh, you would think it would have been very busy. The day was beautiful, uh, the sun was shining, and uh, I didn't see boats for hours. I like the river, it's uh, very scenic. Uh, I like the fact that you can be on it and you don't have to see a thousand boaters or whatever. It's you know very, very private, very secluded. Um, as you drive along, you know, every little bend you go around is a different sight. One of our greatest concerns on our waterways today is shoreline erosion. This is caused by boaters driving too quickly and not obeying the signs. Boat wake destroys valuable fish and wildlife habitat and private property. Use common sense, slow down as you get closer to shore. We all have the responsibility to respect nature and the rights of others. Cypress Gardens is one of many attractions here in Central Florida, but its real claim to fame is it's Florida's first theme park. The 
has evolved into one of the largest and one of the most prestigious theme parks in all of Florida. And of course, it's known also as the water ski capital of the world. One of the things about Cypress Gardens that is unique is the fact that many of these athletes have performed all over the world for the kings, the queens, and the leaders of the world, and they've been known for many, many years as the professional water skiers to beat in competition, but as well as show ski. Normally, uh, we have an eight hour day, actually eight and a half hours. We get a half hour for lunch, come in at nine o'clock in the morning. We have certain jobs we have to do in the morning. Uh, could be set up, which means set up the skis and ropes. Could be a cleaning area, it could be laundry for the girls. Uh, we gas boats, we clean boats, certain jobs like that to make the place look good and to be ready to ski. Uh, the next thing we do is some kind of a stretch or workout, usually together as a team. Uh, we also have a weight room down the other end and occasionally we do some uh, light weights in the morning. And we'll, we'll, uh, we've been doing a lot of group practices. Uh, it's a good time, everybody's here, everybody's together. I, I like a challenge, and so there are a lot of challenges here, day in and day out. Uh, we, we do dock work and things that you're gonna see in the show, but it's later on in the show, and we try to warm up with that, or we may be learning something new at that time. Uh, followed by, uh, any, anybody can go out and practice, uh, jump, barefoot, wakeboard, ballet with the girls with swan skis and the, you know, the 360 swivels and things. So we, we got practice time. Our first show right now is at 11.30. Lasts about a half an hour. Show skiing is truly an entertainment smorgasbord where you can, you have the opportunity, if you will, to watch water ski jumping, wakeboarding, which is the hottest thing on water right now, barefoot water skiing, the beautiful pyramids, the pageantry of ballet. So it's truly an entertainment smorgasbord on top of the water. Water skiing, Cypress Gardens, USA Water Skiing make this area, Central Florida and Winter Haven, the water ski capital of the world. I would have to say the best part of working here is the camaraderie and the atmosphere. You get to work with some great people. Um, you get to learn from the best in the world and there's nothing better than that. Everybody really works together as a team. It's not like now where there's lots of prize money in tournament skiing. When I started there was you know, a very small amount of prize money. But I wanted to ski every day and the best way for me to do that was to become a uh, professional show skier. Part of being a professional skier is you get to hang out with a lot of people you like, have fun, a lot of teamwork, um, travel and do road shows. The worst part of my job is probably crashing. <laughs> the worst part of being a professional water skier, you know, I don't think there is a bad, a bad thing to it. It's, a, it's, it's not a lot of fun job. You get to come and play all day. To Hull and Back, brought to you by Crates Marine of Keswick, Ontario. This season, you're going to see the restoration of a classic Boston Whaler. This design started in the 60s. It was famous because they were the first unsinkable boat that gained mass production. What they are is a boat within a boat filled with foam in between. It's a good candidate for restoration because this boat is still in production today and the design is tried and true. It's a proven design. Um, I'd say that this boat has gotten to be in pretty poor condition, but still, the structural integrity of the vessel is strong enough that uh, it's going to be a good investment. So for a fraction of the cost of new, we're going to be able to have a top-notch quality boat, and we're going to take you through the steps. Specifically, the areas that we're going to be addressing on this boat are the exterior hull. There is a hole in the bow area. There is some abrasion on the sides that have actually cut into the foam. This needs to be repaired. We've drilled the transom. We've done moisture uh, checks on the foam on the inside, and it's, it's, it's in pretty good shape. So that's good news. It's not waterlogged. 
This particular vessel had a solid mahogany center console and seat area, and that's what we're going to put back in. The one that's in there has been really damaged by the weather. Uh, it's had many coats of uh, paint on it, and uh, when we put that back to the original varnished mahogany, it's going to be a really sharp looking unit, just the way it was when it came out of the factory. The uh, paint technology has changed a great deal. So when we refinish the exterior of this hull with the modern paints that are available, we should have a very, very serviceable package at a fraction of the cost of replacing it with new. The Coast Guard Minute. As of April 1st, 1999, there have been some significant changes with regard to boating safety legislation. The Office of Safe Boating of the Canadian Coast Guard has published a new safe boating guide. It is every operator's responsibility to obtain one of these guides and to provide proof of competency. These measures will ensure that all boaters comply and understand the new legislation. There are over 3 million boats registered in Canada. There have been 6,000 accidents, boating accidents, over the last few years, resulting in over 200 fatalities. Something had to be done. The Coast Guard has implemented a boater proficiency course for all boaters, which will be phased in over the next 10 years. The course is not difficult. It stresses safety and is designed to give every boater who takes this course a minimum level of proficiency. The course is designed for novice boaters, young boaters, right up to experienced boaters. It's based on safety, awareness on the water, and common sense. Recognizing the large amount of boaters and potential boaters, the Ontario Marine Operators Association, in conjunction with the Safe Boater Training Program, have courses available across the province. If you live in the province of Ontario, contact us and we will get you set up and get you accredited as quickly as possible. In addition to the boaters proficiency course, a number of other measures are being taken to educate recreational boaters about safety and awareness. The Labatt Waterways Boat Pro Team is a safety program that travels the waterways of Ontario promoting boating safety directly to the boater. The team has been functioning for five years and we promote four key messages wherever we go. Don't drink and boat, wear a PFD, get trained, and be environmentally friendly when you're on the water. The Labatt Waterwise Boat Pro Team was created to promote boating safety and bring people up to speed on the new regulations. The way we do that is to get out to the marinas, to people on their boats, and to the big water events and promote the program. To get this information out to the public, we hand out safety kits which has relevant information to all boaters. In these kits includes a boat guide, a copy of our contest ballot, and a variety of information such as boating etiquette, safe refueling, and other pamphlets. We will talk to over 3,000 boaters and hand out this information face to face. As well as handing out safety information, we also promote boating safety through fun and interactive demonstrations. We do these demonstrations at a variety of venues, both on water and on land. These demonstrations involve the public and we hand out prizes to participants. Our demonstrations focus on our key objectives, which are don't drink and boat, wear your PFD, get the training, and be environmentally friendly. Recreational boating. What a fantastic way to get out on the water and enjoy some quality time with your friends and family. And by being properly trained, you're only going to enhance the experience. Doc Tips with Steve Hayward. In my 10 years of doing marine surveys, there's one problem I see time and time again, and that's improper battery installations. I don't think people realize how dangerous an improperly installed battery can be. Let's show you why, and let's show you the right way to put one in your boat. Now here's your typical marine battery installation. It's just left to fend for itself. It's not secured into position. The wiring is messy. Now if this battery through wave action gets back and contacts this part of the boat, 
being an aluminum boat, you have a dead short, which is gonna cause sparks. Well, guess what's right beside the battery? It's usually the fuel tank. That's a deadly combination. Now, what we're gonna to do today is properly install and secure a battery box that's gonna avoid this potentially hazardous situation. And also, we're gonna clean up the wiring in the back end while we're at it. Now, the first thing we've noted is that the bilge pump wires are just held in place by the wing nuts. There's no connectors on there, so we're gonna correct that. First thing we're gonna do is strip the wires back a good length because what we have to do with these heavier connectors is double this wire up to make sure that we've got a good bite. Like so. And crimp it into position. Do it twice just to make sure you got it. Always verify that it's tight by giving it a good firm tug. Now what we've done is we've used the supply template to locate a safe spot for the battery box and to mount the strap supports. And you can see that's in a position now where we don't have to worry about the battery coming in contact with any kind of metal at all. Set that aside. We run the strap through. That's what holds it all in position. Box goes in. Battery set into position. Now what we need to do now is the lid has got a special location to let the wires run out. So we want to make sure that we rotate all the wires in a direction that's going to accommodate them going out that way. Now before we try and finish this job up and put the lid on and strap it into position, we want to tie strap the wires together to make them a stronger unit, ensuring stress relief. It avoids problems down the road. Now by holding these wires together, these lighter gauge wires to the heavier wires, we're going to avoid having them pulled, pulled free, putting unnecessary strain on the solderless connectors that we just put on. And again, what we're wanting to do here is avoid problems down the road. Just makes it a more secure package. Also keeps things straight if you ever have to disconnect the batteries. Just check those connectors again. Again, we've run the wire straight out the end. The lid goes on. You can see how it fits over nice and snug. Now these lids are vented in such a way that as the battery charges, any gases can come out. Just make sure it's in position, tighten it up, lock it down. Now the good news is, is that battery's not going anywhere. You can count on that not being a problem when you're out in the water. You know, this is a job that anyone can do in a few minutes themselves and can save a lot of potential problems. Until next time, keep your boat off the dock. Ski Tips with Angela Van Zanwick. Water skiing is a lot of fun, and it's very easy to start. All you need is a pair of skis, a rope, a vest, a boat, a driver, and of course a spotter. The easiest way to learn how to choose ski is to put your skis on on the dock, and then to sit to one side of them, and then slide them into the water, and then slowly slide yourself into the water. Now that you're in the water, let the life jacket keep you afloat. Bring your knees into your chest like you're sitting in a chair, just recline back. Wrap your arms around your legs, holding onto the handle, and have the rope going out in between the two skis, and let the boat do all the work. As the rope becomes tight and the boat takes off, make sure that you resist against the pull of the boat by standing up and keeping your knees bent. Also, keep your skis shoulder width apart. This will improve your balance. A common error is to break at the waist, so make sure that you keep your head up, shoulders back, and back straight. Don't get discouraged if you don't get up the first, second, or even the third try. Just keep trying, and we'll see you next time.
The Trent Severn Waterway is a shortcut through the central Ontario interior, leading to Georgian Bay. The Severn River, which makes up the northern part of this waterway, starts at the northern end of Lake Kuchiching, following through to Port Severn on Georgian Bay. In the late 1800s, the Severn River was a logging transport route, and today it's a popular recreational boating destination. Uh, the system opened from Lock 1 to uh, say Lock 45 of Port Severn in 1920. The first vessel through the system was a boat called Irene, and it traveled in in about six days. On the average year, uh, last year we had 8,600 go through the locks here at Port Severn. This summer we're a little bit quieter. I think uh, uh, some of it has to do with the levels of Georgian Bay and some of the other situations that happen upriver. Our traffic is down minimal here for this coming season, but last year was 8,600 went through this lock. As soon as you enter the system from Georgian Bay, the boats are traveling upstream to uh, Kirkfield on Balsam Lake. And one, I see once the exit, uh, uh, the lift locks at Kirkfield, they start drown, I see downstream to Lake Ontario at Trenton. And our system uh, is a total of 240 miles long uh, with uh, 43 different locks throughout the system. Actually, it was, it was quite an experience. I've never been on a lock before, so going up and down the locks, that was really interesting. And that one ride that we took, I'm not sure what they call it, um, where we went over the hill, I've never seen anything like that before in my life, and uh, it was really fun to go on. Today's trip, it was, uh, it was great. Started first thing this morning. We uh, left the dock about uh, 9 o'clock in Aurelia. I've been through six sets of locks, I think, now, and uh, one was like a sling lift. That was kind of interesting. First time I've ever seen that. Um, we had a good time today. It was, uh, the weather was perfect. Water was great. Um, a lot of nice boats that were traveling around. beautiful up here. Uh, never been to Aurelia or to Port Severn before and really interesting waterways that they have going through here. Uh, usually we just go out on lakes ourselves but this time uh, it's very be beautiful scenery um, going through and there's a few narrow areas which make the, makes the ride even a little bit more interesting. Oh the scenery is beautiful, beautiful. There's a lot of nice, a lot of nice cottages around. Um, and like I say, the boats were uh, most impressive. And uh, we even had some nice boats that we were traveling in today. Very comfortable. <laughs> it was a great day, a great experience, and uh, I'd love to have the opportunity to try it again. It's been a good many years since I've been through this system. I would say uh, the last time I was through any part of it was in the late 70s. This is a trip that I think is a really fine way to spend a day or two on the way up. I mean, if you want to spend the night uh, tied up at one of the docks, it's not a problem if you have a boat that has accommodation or there's accommodation in areas along the water. Um, or uh, you can easily do it in a day from Lake Kuchiching, Lake Simcoe, right up to Georgian Bay. Go for it. Off the Dock Adventures on TSN is sponsored in part by Honda Generators, quiet, reliable, portable electric power, and AirChair, the sky's the limit.